Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Zed from Zed Outdoors. I hope you're having an amazing day. So, today I'm with the delightful Carol. Carol, how are you doing? You're probably sitting there thinking, who's Carol, right? <laughs> I'll tell you in a second. Just give you a quick backdrop. Um, I'm at the Bushcraft Magazine May Day Gathering in Kent, which is the southeast of England. Now, if you haven't already seen, I've done a video diary of that event. And what I'll do, I'll probably do some fancy editing and put it on your screen somewhere now. Uh, go, it was an overview of the entire event, loads of skills being shared by experts. Uh, and Carol is one of those experts. So I got talking to Carol yesterday. Now, I need to get this correct. Carol is a wild cooking expert, is that correct? Yeah, forager and wild food cook. Yeah. Forager, wild forager, expert forager, professional <laughs> forager, everything to do with forager. Basically, she knows her stuff, right? But she's a professional. She's actually full time at it, you know. So it's not just some part time hobby. <laughs> it is, it's a passion. It's something she does full time. Uh, I've been blown away by what she knows and what she's demonstrating throughout this weekend. But yeah, you know, she mentioned something to me yesterday, and she mentioned it at a bad time. I was actually hungry at the time, right? So I was like, we've got to do a video of that. But can you explain what we're going to do today in terms of... Um... Right, well, this is this is something that is super, super simple. It's very easy for people to do. So hopefully it will be able to help you to re relate to bushcraft, and you can bridge the gap between coming out and doing something that's full on in the woods and actually recreating it at home, so it's nice and easy to do. And it's box-baked camembert with ramsin leaves. So it's very much for this time of the year. Um, Ramsons is about now and um, it, as I say it's something you can do in a Dutch oven as we've got in front of us or um, something that you could bake in the oven at home. Very very simple to do and it doesn't take an awful lot of foraging, quite easy to identify the plants. So. I think this is the key thing here, so it's not just a bunch of theory, you know, it's, it's someone, and this is what I like about what you're doing, it's very, it's about as practical as you can get. It's identifying it, knowing what its uses are and using it there then to yeah. eat and satisfy the hungry belly. Yeah. So what we'll do first, what we're going to do is you're going to show us where to actually find the... Yeah. Uh, so what we'll do, uh, let's pop over now and uh, let's actually do the foraging aspect first before we get into the cooking. Yeah. Okay. okay, so first we're doing the actual foraging part of it. So Carol, do you want to talk us through what we're okay, looking for here? Okay, right. This is, this is the Ramsons plant, which is Allium ursinum, also known as bear garlic. Um, these are quite small young plants but um, they can grow to, to quite large proportions. The leaves can be at least twice this size and the flower head's just a little taller. And it's a classic onion type flower. So if people who have allotments would be very familiar with how the, um, the onion head of the, the head of the flower looks, um, it opens up into little star-like flowers. That one's probably a better example of that. You can see there in a little cluster, um, often forms quite a large ball of of white star-like flowers and what we're looking for particularly are these leaves so if I just take one of these and show you what you're looking for is a nice strap like slight oval leaf okay and for identification purposes there's very little veining in there and what what veining there is runs right from from the bottom end here right to the tip and I'm showing you that because there are other plants in the woodland which you can mistake this for particularly when they're very young and one of those is the arum lily um, which we don't have any to hand but um, I will try and find some perhaps later if you want to photograph that so you can see the differences. Arum lily has two little forks that stick out at the base um, but when they're both plants are very young it's possible to accidentally pick um, the two together and obviously things like bluebells which are also growing amongst it and another plant that you need to watch out for which is dog's mercury which is this one here when you're picking you want to sometimes people pick a handful and cut at the base there's no problem with that but just remember to um, pick your harvest over once you get it home to make sure you haven't accidentally picked up any leaves of anything toxic okay so this is growing a particular habitat? This, uh... Yeah, what you're looking for is damp areas um, of woodland, ideally. And um, as you can see here, we've got a little streamlet. And so these are nice, moist, damp banks. And you will often find large swathes of ramsons when it's in season in sites pre precisely like this. But um, slightly boggy ground, slightly damp ground is, is where they're favoured growth is. And is it a particular time of year? That you know? Yeah, this is very much a spring plant. So you're, you're looking, um, you know, around about this time of year. Um, within a week, this will all have gone over. The, the flowers will be starting to set seed and the leaves will probably have gone beyond the point where you can use them really. They start to get yellow. Um, and there will be a very strong and distinctive smell of, of garlic associated with these, um, often in the woodlands, particularly when the plant is going over. Um, but don't lose hope if you get to a patch too late because you can still harvest the seed and you can use the seed as well. So it's, it's a very versatile plant. 
potentially you could use the bulb of this, um, but obviously there are issues with the legality of, of uprooting plants. You need to have permission if you're going to uproot. So far better to um, just cut the leaf um, or grow your own, which you can do. I mean, there are places now where you can get rootstock, um, you can buy bulbs for ramsons or you can buy seed for ramsons from various outlets and, um, and try growing them in your garden. You just have a little corner somewhere, relatively shady, and keep them nice and moist and they should grow for you. Excellent stuff, man. So is it down to the cooking table now? It is, yeah. Let's go and, and start preparing and uh, I'll show you what you can do with these. Okay. So now we are back at the board, the board, the, the boardroom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's right. eating all my samples? I oh, know, samples <laughs> yeah, are all gone. The only little bit that's left. So, so, so it's just like a magic trick. Okay, so now that we've hit the, uh, the rounds. Yep. And then, so, uh, do you want to talk us through what the next step right, is? Right, okay. Um, so, the ingredients are going to be ramsons leaves, some stems, and flour. And a very simple, not terribly expensive, box of camembert, which you can pr get pretty much anywhere. Okay, probably cost you about £1.50, something like that. Mm -hmm. Nice and quick and easy. And what I like about this is that it's something you can do over a campfire if you're out and about, or you can do it at home if you want to practice. Now, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to take this plastic layer off. When you buy your camembert, you'll find there's a little bit of plastic attached to a paper layer. So we're just going to take that off. Get rid of the plastic. Nope, maybe a bit of a fight here. There we go. Right. Put that into my rubbish bag. And we're going to keep the paper. And we've got our nice camembert. Now, to do this easily, buy um, a, a not mature camembert, a young one that's not soft and squishy. Because what you're going to do now requires a bit of surgical precision. A nice oh. sharp knife. Just go around. You're going to hate me for this bit and you'll think it's terribly fiddly, but if your camembert is, is nice and young, it's easy. If it's a sticky one, it's almost impossible. <laughs> so do remember to get it as fresh and young as possible and you're just going to cut some layers. So that's the first one. And we call that our lid. And then I'm going to do it again, just to make life really, really hard for you. <laughs> if you find this too fiddly, then just cut it in half. You know, you don't, you don't have to do three layers, but obviously the, the three layers are good because you can wedge much more of the plant material in, which means you're absolutely oozing with flavour when you've baked it. And you'll see why when we kind to finally take it out of the Dutch oven. Right, sorry, this might just involve a little bit of a fight, this last one. Make sure you stay away from your arteries. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Be very, very careful. Um, I think this camembert's had time to warm up a tad. My other one was a little bit more straightforward. Obviously, sticky things do cause problems, but we're getting there. Okay. Come on, off you come. always the way when you're trying to demonstrate something that things just refuse to play ball. Right, okay, so that's our three layers. I'm going to open that one back out and then, excuse me while I just wipe my hands, which will be slightly sticky. The quickest way to cut is use scissors um, and I always do carry a pair of scissors with me um, even when I'm out and about. Very versatile, useful tool and all I'm going to do is chop quantity of plant material into one of these layers. Now this is this has got the rind on the outside so um, so we're going to call that the bottom. You can see the rinds under there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're just going to cover that, absolutely cover that with bits of ramsons. Take this top off here and put that over there. And that goes back into the centre of the paper. Like that. with me. <laughs> uh, there's always one that doesn't want to play ball. Stick over there. Right. So you might have to bear with me a minute while we do this because this is the more laborious part. I do use the stems, um, flower stems and 
the leaf stems from ramsons. Some people, when they're cooking with it, will discard those parts. There really is no reason to, um, particularly if you're making something like a soup or a stew, they're perfect because obviously they'll keep their texture that little bit longer and still impart flavour. So there's obviously flavour throughout the whole of the stalks, so there really isn't any need to throw them away. It seems a crying shame to me to go to the trouble of picking something and then discard half of it. So then what I'm going to do is take a bundle of leaves like this and I'm just going to roll them into a tube and then I'm going to chop loads and loads of that. So you really pile it on, don't oh, you? Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you think, God, this is going to be overkill, but trust me, it's worth it. Absolutely worth it because by the time it's cooked and softened, um, you want enough to, to blend with the cheese. I don't know if you noticed, but the leaf that we picked down by the, the side of the little stream was considerably smaller than these ones. These are a lot larger. Um, and that's just because some patches where it's a bit more moist, um, you will get better growth. So that's the first layer. Now we take the super sticky, non-cooperative centre <laughs> center chunk, if I can re relieve it from where it's just decided to weld itself. Excuse me a second. Come off. <laughs> Trouble. There when we go. When you're trying to show somebody something, it always comes off. Oh, that's oh, always the way. Oh, no, you sorry. can absolutely guarantee it. There we go. Okay, so that's our centre layer. Right, having got that in place, all we do now is basically the same process again. So we're taking our pieces of stem and we pile them on top. And of course, the same process again rolls and rolls of um, leaf chopped. And at this point, if you have the flowers, you can use them. As I said, even these little, I don't know if you can see them there, tiny little seeds which are starting to develop, um, they can be scattered in there as well. Um, an actual fact, you can, I mean, in salads, in a wild salad, these are particularly nice to have, um, just as a little decoration and also as a little burst of garlic flavour, which is delicious. So, roll your leaves. So this has taken me maybe 10 minutes mm -hmm. so far. It's, it's a little fiddly cutting it in half, but other than that, it's actually quite a straightforward procedure. And this is why I like doing this. That is the bottom of the box of camembert. Okay, so this all goes back in there like that. We take our lid part with the rind on top and you put that in. Just press it down and then re-wrap whole lot back up. Like a Big Mac. Yep, just like a Big Mac, only nicer, <laughs> much, much nicer. I won't say it's better for you because it probably isn't. <laughs> okay, and that is it. That is the fiddly part done. Then what we do, if you're cooking over a campfire, take yourself a nice cast iron Dutch oven, pop a few sticks in the bottom. Just a quick question. What? So for those of you, let's say I'm camping out on mm -hmm. my own um, and I won't have a Dutch oven on me, would a conventional pot work okay? It or? would. Um, the great thing about a Dutch oven, obviously, is that you're talking about something that heats up all round. I mean, okay. that's the, you know, this is why I like cooking with cast iron. It's not easy to carry mm -hmm. um, by any means, but um, you know, it's it's certainly um, a very good cooking method. And the sticks at the bottom, you might be wondering why, but obviously when you've got something that's made of cardboard and wood, um, bearing in mind this is going to get very, very warm, you just need a, a degree of separation, otherwise you will ign get ignition. <laughs> and your camembert will catch fire, and that's not what we want. So um, so the sticks just, just take it away from the base, and then that will go over onto the fire. And I can walk away and leave that for around about 15 to 20 minutes. So it's something that you can actually walk away from. So we can take this to the campfire. Now it's not a raging fire, it, it's actually embers, so it's, it's as about as uh, good a temperature as you can possibly get. You don't want flame on a campfire. Ideally for cooking you want a good layer of embers, um, you know, and it's something that will warm the pot. So as I say, we'll just leave that on there 15-20 minutes. And shall we come back in 15-20 minutes then? Sure. Right. So here we are, about 15-20 minutes later. I'm just going to go and get a pot. That's just been left to stew on here. 
like I said, burning embers, slightly raised up. Okay, so let's see how we're going. Alright, now you'll know your camembert is done if you open it up. You see it's it's quite obviously liquid, and that is how we want it. Okay? And I will be able to just lift that out although it's warm. Put it onto my pot holder. We'll just take that and serve it. Come, let's have a look at this, man. This is the exciting part. <laughs> this is where you guys watching at home are going to get really, really jealous now. <laughs> okay. So, as you can see, I've, I've done a little bit of dating, and that's going to go there. Yeah, she, knew always, she knew always coming, so she got all fancy with the presentation. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've got to do it properly. You're going to do it, do it properly. Eat with your eyes as well as with your belly, as they say. There we go. It's lovely and liquid. Either little biscuits or whatever you see how squishy that is Ooh, just God. stir it around and enjoy okay so what I suggest actually is as we've got a bit of an audience with us you guys come and tuck in <laughs> breadsticks need to be a little crispy but just that seriously does look the bee's knees it smells fantastic as well, that's the other thing. Come on Lawrence. Wonderfully appetizing. Pre-surgeon extraordinaire. <laughs> <laughs> let's go man, let's go. I want, I want your verdict on this ladies and gentlemen. Yes please, yes. You can, um, oh. you can rate it. Right, those breadsticks nice. are probably a little in soft. Fact, so I'm going to put it in there. It's in there. Oh, that's alright, that happens all the time. <laughs> the joy of this is that um, even if it starts to go cold, what you can it's do is, nice. is let it go cold and then cut it into little slices. And eat it that way. Also, so you could have it with a salad if you wanted. Oh yes, yes. And I, I um, I'm a firm believer that you could uh, do wild party food. Oh. And this could be the basis of. So one even of the cameraman dishes. gets a bit. Yeah. Even the <laughs> don't burn yourself. Uh, so there you go. There you have it. Man. Same. We don't have a smelly vision anymore, man. That's smart <laughs> and tasted absolutely adorable. Carol, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Once again for taking the time out. Um, you were just mentioning something just a second ago about potentially cooking this at home. Yep. Yeah, so what are the tips and suggestions that you give? Um, it's a little bit simpler when you're cooking it at home. Um, basically, obviously, you don't need to, to put it in a Dutch oven. All you would do is, once you've wrapped the box back up, um, put your oven on a low heat, pop it into the middle shelf, and around about the same sort of time frame, you're talking 15, 20 minutes, and all you need to do to check that it's absolutely cooked through is just is give the, the camera bear a little poke, and as long as it's liquid inside, we're ready to roll. So it's, it's a very, very simple thing to reproduce at home. You don't have to be in a bushcraft setting to cook it, but it's nice that you can. Yeah, well the thing is, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna be speaking to Carol shortly a bit later on about some of my own training. Mm -hmm. As you guys know, I'm very kind of big into this, and this whole identification, foraging, and, and what have you not, but what you've done here is really what I'm about. Mm. So it's not just reading a book and getting all the theory. Yes. Right, take it, use it, implement it, boom, and then uh, it's kind of like the whole will beat you being able to um, touch a plant, taste a plant, smell a plant. Books will get you so far, yeah. but they won't take you that extra long. Um, and so it's it's important that you can go out with somebody who can do that for you and show you. Um, you know where the pitfalls are, and, and um, you know the things that you just need to be a bit careful of. Um, I say books can't can't show you that last yeah. step. But the thing, I think the key thing for me, and this is where we kind of get real and practical, is you want stuff to be simple mm. and just actually do. If all of yeah. a sudden you you pulled up like you know 25 ingredients in front of me, man, I, yeah, I think everyone I would be having a heart attack. What? I can't carry yeah. that. But literally, it was like two things. <laughs> it's a lot to absorb in one yeah. go. Um, if you're starting to learn about wild plants and you're interested, I would suggest to people just pick maybe two or three and spend a year getting to know them. Anything from you know seedling size right through to when they finally expire in kilos, or if they do, and some don't if they're perennials, and um, and just. Learn everything you possibly can about that plant, and and also the ones that might mimic it, and or you know might trip you up because they're toxic and they look they look alike. Um, just take your time. You don't have to rush. It's, you know that's um, that's the thing. Just take your time. Take it easy. Well, I want to thank Carol once again. I'm sure you guys at home are going to be thanking Carol. <laughs> so most importantly, Carol, if people want to find out more about you, what you're doing, I mean, yeah. where's the best place to get in touch with? Um, find me on Facebook. Um, I have a page called Carol Hunt Edible Wild, and um, pretty much that's that's where I am. You're welcome to um, get in touch, touch base, ask questions, send me photographs if you're looking um, to identify something. I'll see if I can help. If I can't, I usually know someone can. 
Um, and most importantly, this is the good bit, recipes. Ooh, that's Come see like. me for recipes, I'm, I'm sure I can help. So it was Carol Hunt? Edible Wild. Edible Wild. Yeah, and that's on Facebook. Or you can find me via the um, Bushcraft magazine because um, they have a Facebook presence as well. Yeah. And I'm an admin on that, so um, yeah, I'm around. Well, after this video, I know one of the things I'm going to be doing is liking Carol's fan page. But look, if you like what you see, and, I'm, and I know you guys, a lot of you subscribers, and you like what I like, you know, um, and I'm sure you'd agree, you know, Carol's got some amazing. It doesn't matter where you are, I know a lot of you guys are out in continents of Europe, America, whatever, I think the principles of it still apply. You, know, you can kind of find your version in, in your part of the world. I'm only assuming that's the case. Well, um, yeah, sometimes, I mean, not only that, but I, do you know what I really love? I love the fact that the internet makes us, us, us really is a global community. And so we yeah. can have dialogues about plants yeah. and teach each other so much. Yeah. So, you know, it's all out there. Yeah. Well, I want to thank Karen once again for the time taken out. And if you enjoyed it, just leave a comment below. Most importantly, if you like what you see, then just go and check out Carol's fan page. Uh, I know I'm going to be speaking to Carol a lot more, whether she likes it or not. Right? <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> about, about all this stuff, right? Put her on the spot. Nothing like put, you, put someone on the spot in front of a camera. Um, but no, seriously, this is, this is the kind of stuff I'm really getting into. Well, listen, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't thank me. Thank the lady here. Um, and if you, you know, like, comment, you know, subscribe, go and check out Carol's uh, fan page for sure. And until next time, this is Zed from Zed Outdoors. Carol, if you want to get, and then that's it. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>